Right, I want to get you across all the other headlines you need to know about tonight. And to do that, I'll bring in my panel, LNP MP Keith Pitt, former Howard Government Minister Gary Hargraves. Well, my dynamic duo on a Monday. There's a fair bit around. Keith, I'll start with this uh, pretty shocking story about the NDIS. We learned today that a pedophile has been given a $1.4 million support package under the NDIS to cover 24-hour supervision in high security accommodation. Now, you can understand the anger of taxpayers. He's not alone, is he? Oh, not, not at all, Peter. Uh, but, but firstly, you know, the NDIS has provided support that was desperately needed by many individuals. It's been an absolute boon for them. But let's call it for what it is. Uh, the, the cost is out of control. It is absolutely out of control. And we saw reports last week that, in fact, close on 30% of all new jobs were in the NDIS. That, that is just not sustainable. And Bill Shorten's been out there and he's setting this up for the budget. There'll be budget cuts. Got no doubt about that. Uh, and the bits that really worry me <clears throat> is those individuals who have severe disabilities, the ones that need the absolute uh, and most support, are struggling to get people to help mm -hmm. them uh, because you know, those carers can take an opportunity which is not quite as challenging and not quite as difficult. So let, how about we uh, help the ones who are desperately in need first uh, and we need to get this under control. And we saw those reports last week of people being offered uh, trips to music festivals, um, prostitution's right. been rumoured about for some time, all that stuff, lawns mowed, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, we, I spoke with Dennis Shanahan about this, Gary, at the top of the show, about the motivations behind Labor or second-guessing Israel's inquiry into that IDF strike. Now, Dennis Shanahan says he believes it's a political decision and it's about local domestic politics in Australia. Well, let's just go Absolutely. through what was revealed in the Australian newspaper today. The Australian reveals there's at least two new registered websites linked to political and community networks that rank MPs in so-called focus electorates, where the Muslim population is about 10% or more. And one of these sites, again, in the Australian today, called Muslim Vote, says it's got substantial funding to drive campaigns and around 2,000 volunteers ready to door knock at the next election. Mobilising the Muslim vote to make pro-Arab changes to Australia's foreign policy, that's straight out of the playbook in the UK. And that's a worry to me, Gary. And it should be, Peter, but it's also happening in the United States as well, where Joe Biden is caving into the same kind of stuff. It's almost like October 7 didn't exist in the minds of some of these weak politicians. And the Prime Minister is playing that card right now. You've only got to look at the recent Brisbane City Council election, a long-standing, great local councillor with a large Islamic vote in her constituency, lost a seat to Labor. And what was the issue that was driving the votes? Uh, it wasn't about the, the, the great management of the local council or indeed the local parks or anything like that. It was about what was happening in Gaza. And, you know, we well, can't forget what happened, and that was Angela Owen in the Callumvale Ward. You cannot forget... Uh, what happened on October 7. We should not be giving these terrorists a leave pass yeah, because yeah. Anthony Albo is in some sort of political problem. He's already got problems in Western Sydney where Muslim business owners know how bad the economy is, but they're not voting about their wallet, they're voting about their heart. Now, I respect that, but seriously, local councillors getting voted out because of a position on Gaza? Uh, they've got to rethink their strategy, but Albo is pandering to them. He's turning his back on the Jews, and the Jews are a minority that need our support right now, and it's just simply wrong, Peter, wrong. I might uh, say it again, that uh, report out of the UK, out of a think tank called Henry Jackson Institute, who says that of the Muslim-educated population in the UK that was surveyed, 40% of 18 to 24-year-olds do not believe that October 7 happened. That's what we've got to guard against here oh, in Australia. Wow. Let's go to nuclear power if we can, Keith. Uh, Peter Dutton's uh, nuclear energy plan has been attacked uh, pretty, pretty hotly by the Prime Minister. He says it won't be possible to deliver small modular reactors by the middle of 2030. But that's not the overseas experience, is it? So how does he get away with it? 
Well, who do you want to believe, Peter? <laughs> Prime Minister Albanese or Rolls-Royce? Yeah. Well, I'm going with Rolls-Royce. Yeah, yeah. This is what they do for a living. They've got thousands of people that do it. Yeah. And they're not that small. I mean, the proposal's almost 400 megawatts or around there. And to give your viewers an idea, that's the same size as the units that are at Stanwell Corporation uh, near Rockhampton. Four of them. Uh, so they're about 365 megawatts each there. So th these are still quite substantial generators. It, it, they're atypical for what you would see in Australia and many locations around the country. And they work. They work all the time. Uh, and, you know, the next election, Peter, this will be a contest. Uh, it will be about energy, energy security, particularly national security. And I don't think any of your viewers want this country reliant on Chinese manufacturing for solar panels and wind turbines. We need to look after ourselves and our own country and our yeah, own yeah, national yeah. security and affordable and reliable electricity and nuclear delivers it. Here, here. Here, here. I tell you what, eh? Gary, at the same time, of course, we've got Chris <laughs> Bowen's department. This is the Department of Climate Change. Uh, they have spent uh, close to $40,000 on sunglasses for, quote, extreme climate. This is for the Australian Antarctic Division. And nearly $27,000 on an executive planning day. Now, I don't know what they're planning. They don't get a hell of a lot done. But, you know, you, you've got this department spending that sort of money and yet the policies that come out of that department are why pensioners can't put the heater on and can't pay their light bill. You know, Peter, I, when I was a minister, I saw departmental officers bringing forward the T-shirt, the snow jacket, uh, fully insulated, marvellous stuff. They, they, they print the T-shirts and the kit before they get the policy right, a lot of these people in Canberra. Who in Queensland would want a snow jacket? But, of course, the departmental officers brought me the snow jacket. <laughs> I mean, it's fair dinkum. This is the sort of stuff that does my head in. And, and the idea of hiring people to hold hands to sing Kumbaya with you uh, at a... At a gathering is not unusual, but the sunglasses thing is wrong. Uh, we are uh, the, the 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 shameless waste of time and money by this government. This is a government that seems to have lost its way completely, and are just playing distraction games now. They they don't have anything substantial. They just simply want to create division, hurt, and difficulty. Uh, even the you know the grocery prices and all of the stuff they're talking about. I mean, you can't trust them with petrol prices, with power prices. You can't trust them not to increase taxes. And I don't care what's coming in the budget. I'm worried about what's going to happen after the election if they come back. And I think that's the real threat to Australians. Can you afford another three years of this mob? I don't think you can. Simple. You have just reminded me of all the times I used to have fights with the public servants about flying at the pointy end of the plane and staying in <laughs> fancy hotels. I'm hearing you. We put, a lot, of, we put a lot of yeah, focus yeah. on the politicians spending our money, but let's go after some of the public servants. That's my homework. Yeah, hey, Keith, absolutely. just quickly, these social media companies, this is, this is Facebook, refusing to take down this footage of young Australians committing violent crimes. This is what's fueling things. Yeah. Well, for them, it's about the clicks, Peter. Uh, for me, it's them aiding and abetting criminals. Yeah, uh, and yeah. we should treat them as such. Absolutely. And we should make it a serious crime because the people that I represent are sick of it. They're sick of youth crime. They're sick of their, having their houses and cars broken into. And this is one way we can crack down on this. And Meta should hang their heads in shame. Yep. Right. Well, let's hope the legislators go after them. Gents, thank you. See you both next week.